I'm live, it says. Hello, hello, hello. And thank you for coming. Welcome to Garden, Quilt, and Art Show, where good friends become family and family is everything. Hello, Maria Graham, the early bird. She's been out working in her garden, showing off in the warm temperatures in Georgia. I to see Joanne Stevens. Thanks for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. So let me pull up the chat and give the others a chance to come in. Maria says, how is Uncle Roscoe, my Renaissance grandma? Hello and welcome. Thank you for coming. Those of you who are here the first time, thank you for coming. I'd like to thank the moderators, the people, the subscribers who have been coming all the time. Happy to say we have 1,500 family members now. Sonia Sigler. I think I'm saying it correctly. I think I heard somebody pronounce it on one show, and my daughter's name is Sonia. I think I mentioned to you that we call her Sonia and not Sonia. Karen's Little Garden. You asked me a question on one of the previous lives, and it's when I had the camo fabric, and it was like a stretchy fabric. I did measure it after I got off the air, and it was 60 inches. I had cut the strip in half because I was going to make my skirt, the hanging piece, 30 inches. So... Going back to the welcoming, I would like to thank the moderators. You do such a good job. And anybody in the chat, if anyone comes in at any time and they're disruptive, not following our protocol, the way we operate things, anybody can click on their name and zap them. Try to be fair, though. Some people are just strange, just strange. You you answer both ways, Sonia. Oh, okay. Thank you. So if you're here for the replay, I'd like to thank you as well. And those of you in the bushes, most people come out of the bushes on Saturday because they don't have to work. Tomorrow is what's known as the traditional St. Patrick's Day. Is anybody planning on cooking a, a uh, St. Patrick's Day dinner? Thank you, Marie Graham, so she loves the hair. You know, I just sprayed it and wet it just before I came out because I truly, this 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 new hair style, I, I don't know what to do with it. So I try to freshen myself up, you know, put my lips on, brush my teeth, even though you can't see my teeth up close, and try to fix myself up for you guys. I think that if you take your time away from whatever you're doing that day to come spend a little time with me, I want to put my best foot forward. The foot, the foot speaking, speaking of the foot, it's a little bit tired this evening. Maria says that hubby deer is making corned beef sandwiches. My granddaughter, Sharita, usually does the cooking at the family home on St. Patrick's Day. And she usually makes corned beef and cabbage, you know, with all the sides. Regional Sky Girl, I've been seeing you buzzing around going everywhere. Erica Taylor, thanks for coming. And welcome, welcome, welcome. LGGG Love says hello to host and chat. And hello to you too. It's getting warm in Connecticut, but they're not fooling me. They're not fooling me. I was being bad today because I'm not able to go to my community garden by myself. I had a hard enough time pushing my cart and my cane and walker. Today I went for the first time, I took myself to the post office to mail a couple of packages, wrestling with them, wrestling with the cart, getting them out there, going through all the handicap maze of these old buildings to get it up there. Then the guy's printer wasn't going, and I'm like, sir, I'm not able to stand a long time. So I said, oh, I'm sorry, it's the printer here. I think he just hadn't put new ink in it. But anyway, I left there, went to Walmart. 
I'm just going to chit chat. Today's a create and create and chat anyway. We'll probably be doing most chatting. I had the funniest time. I should have had the camera on, except I probably would have gotten arrested because I was in Walmart for the first time driving those little one of those handicap carts. Oh my goodness. So the thing of it is you have to be able to get from the parking lot into into the store and ask for a cart. But I found out today, I asked if we get there, can somebody bring a cart to the curb so that we can get inside? She said yes. So she gave me like a two second, okay, here's the start, here's the reverse. But I didn't see what she was doing on the reverse. And the first thing I did was, er, and almost ran over her. You had your knee replacement. You suffer many challenges. God bless you, LGGG. Oh, oh, oh. And you want to see, you want to make the, the challenge more. Put a, put a, what do you call it? Put a blindfold on one day and try to walk around all day. Um, I don't know how long ago your knee replacement was, LGG G love. L triple G love. Mine was just exactly four weeks ago. So I went over there and I'm driving around. I almost ran over a couple of people. The lady showing me the cart said, Oh, I'm not going to cross in front of you. I said, no, please don't do that. The, oh, yours is one year. I hope to be in better shape in one year. And then today was the first day I really went out like walking around, trying to shop, put things in the cart. One time I was leaning over too far. Somebody came up and said, Miss, do you, do you want me to help you? Because you look like you're about to fall out of that cart. I guess I was. I guess I was. But I made it, made it home, got everything back. It gets better. This, this is actually my second knee. I had one knee done two years ago and the hip, <laughs> the hip before that, bump and run. I, I was like a three-year-old in their first bumping cart. I was like doing things. So then I had a real, a big handicap cane that I used to walk from the parking lot to the store. Why? Because I couldn't take my walker in there. Where was I going to leave it? So I took one of the big canes with four feet on it so that it wouldn't fall down. Hey, Miss Shirley, OG. Nope, didn't have time for my nap today. The retired gardener. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. So I was a mess in the store. So when I left, the guy gave me my cane and he said, well, I didn't see any, you know, the poles that hold the store up. He said, I didn't see any of those poles down. So I guess it's safe to stay in here and work. I said, I guess so. So then I'm headed out the door in the cart and the door didn't open. He said, you're not close enough. I'm like, you sure you want me to do that? <laughs> I'm like, you sure you want me to do that? I usually stay far back from things. Oh, so that, that was an experience. LGG, L triple G love said, we are twins. Anybody that, 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 that gets to be 75 or, or in their 60s, they know what I'm talking about. Uh, yes, here's my ice pack, my knee pack. I'm resting my leg now. So I am so excited because I'll wait. Um, it's 6.09 until a few more people get in. I was so excited because my son went to my P.O. box a couple of weeks ago when he was here. And some of the gardeners were having seedmas instead of like Christmas, but they were having seedmas. You would never leave your cane anywhere. That would be a deal breaker. I actually used to have a white cane and the white cane was I had when I was legally blind. So I can see perfectly out of one eye now, but something happened to my white cane. I left it somewhere. I liked it because people could see it or I could wave it and, and it would be distracting. So people would try not to run off you. Hey, Nancy, our treasured home. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. Ty Lily, thank you for coming. Long time no see. 
Glad to have you in. Glad to have you in. Why? I'm happy to have all of you because good friends become family and family is everything. Ty Lilly is one of my friends I met on YouTube when I didn't even have a channel. We just met, I think we were talking about gardening and no, and maybe sewing because she sews. She sent me a beautiful gift. The little owl I have that sits above where my sewing area is was a gift from, from her. So because the chat comes on today at seven o'clock, I will go ahead and get started because I have a huge mail call, but this month is Women's History Month, and I would like to read an article to you about a woman of history who happened to live in Connecticut, and I read some, some a small fact today that I was really surprised about. Connecticut is the third smallest state out of all 50 states, but it's the fourth in population. That is amazing. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of people in Connecticut, a lot of people paying taxes, which is why I think Connecticut has so many benefits. Connecticut has benefits that a lot of other states don't have. Why? Because they have a lot of people paying with good jobs, paying into the system and paying for things. So without further ado, I want to read a story about a woman named Reverend Bess. Who is Reverend Bess? Most of you have seen me, that little black sewing machine that I sew on most of the time. It's called a featherweight. The featherweight machine is historical in and of itself because that sewing machine came from this pastor, Reverend Best, who was like a godmother to me, an auntie. And when she was retiring, she wanted me to have this machine and I didn't want to take it for nothing. LGGG love, I'm going to read it out loud because that's so sweet. She said, you look amazing to be in your 70s. I'm, I just turned 75. Yes. So this is Reverend Bess in all her glory in her house. And I would like, I used to stop when I was teaching in an after school program in New Haven, Connecticut. I used to stop by her house on the way home from the school that I taught the after school program. So I'd like to read the story because most of the sewing machines that I have are not only antiques, but they're especially historical. The Reverend Elnora Bess, as shown at her home, Elnora's Emanuel House, New Haven, Connecticut. The church will hold their 38th and final dinner tonight. I think I was the chief keynote speaker that night because my dad and mom came up from the city they live in and Reverend Bus was so excited because she said she'd love to see a man in a hat. So I'll read the story about Reverend Bess because why? This is Women's History Month and this is a person of history who play, played a part in my life here in the last say 20, 25 years. Nearly four decades ago, Reverend Best thought of a way to help pay for an $8 million building to house her church congregation. We both went to the same church at that time. She gathered up her best china, hauled it down to the church, and held a benefit dinner, charging each patron $100 a plate. Folks back then warned her no one would go. The price was too steep, they said. However, Best proved them wrong. Hey, Tori's brain. I will acknowledge everybody who came in in a minute. I just want to read the this story about this wonderful woman who was a friend of the family. And I called her like auntie, like you guys call me auntie. And I hope you feel the same way about me. Bess proved them wrong, raising thousands over the years for Emmanuel Missionary Baptist Church a tradition that continues today. Bess, the church's first woman deacon and a pioneer in the city's fashion industry, will hold her 38th and last dinner tonight. She jokes with organizers that at age 91, 
She should maybe move on to other things. I'm just retiring because I'm 91, but the fundraiser will go on, I hope, Bess said this week. Organizers of the dinner are planning a tribute to Bess, a religious leader, fashion designer, entrepreneur, and activist who raised 33 foster children and regularly opened her backyard swimming pool to homeless kids. She is such an interesting woman in terms of the strength of her personality, said Ann Garrett Robinson, professor, professor emeritus at Gateway Community College and curator for the Little Red Brick House Museum, who is putting together an exhibit that chronicles Bess's life. A former Yale graduate of African American Studies wrote this about Reverend Bess in a 1998 research paper. Reverend Elnora Bess, tall, strong, powerful, dynamic, and confident. Her dress matches her purse, matches her hat, matches her shoes. The vanity plates on her black El Dorado Cadillac, the sixth she has owned, announces Reverend Bess. A white ornate wrought iron archway in front of her home proclaims Elnora's Emmanuel House. It is difficult to ignore her presence. Reverend Bess loves to tell her story and she is so articulate that it's easy to spend hours just listening to her. Robinson calls perseverance one of Bess's most notable characteristics. And it talks about her life growing up she had the first black modeling agency and hat store in the state of Connecticut to go on. But it's 617 and I want to go on to other things. But I wanted to tell you about my friend, Reverend Bess, in honor of Women's History Month, Tori's Brain. And thanks all of you who are in on a Saturday evening. And thanks for saying hello to each other. So now I want to talk about my fat Erica Taylor says, great story. Thank you. I've actually had this article for about, about 10 years. Sorry, my allergies. I've been out in the weather today. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. It'll probably clear the air. So I would like to talk about my mail haul one thing one of the first things i won't show the address is a birthday card for four members of my family tori's brain says yes great story that's one of the little known stories you don't hear about people in everyday life like somebody who raised 33 foster children someone opened her backyard swimming pool at her own house to homeless children you know, people would say, oh, I don't want them in my pool. Or maybe they didn't have a bath. Or maybe, maybe, maybe. But but Reverend Bess was different. She was different. And a lot of the things that she sold as she was selling things in her house at her age, I took to the homestead in North Carolina, including Be Bessie, that my sewing machine, a little black one, is named Bessie after Reverend Bess. So this is a birthday card from Maria Graham. I thought that was very sweet. Hey, Nikki, the everyday life of an ocd is chick. Thank you for coming and welcome. And I hope you saw the story of my first house. You'll know why when you see it. It was very interesting. My son went back there and the DMV a couple of weeks ago and took that picture for me. So, Maria, thank you on behalf of my four, my great-grandson, Cam, his mother, Sharita, my son, Aaron, and my daughter, Sonia, all had birthdays in the last two weeks. Then, Maria, with her sweet self, sent me a card with love and warm thoughts, and I won't read what it said. Yes, I will. Love is more powerful than all the time, wealth, or wisdom the world has to offer. And that's why this comes to you with so much love today, your friend, Maria Graham. Thank you, Maria. That is so sweet. That is so sweet. You're so precious. You're so precious and so kind and so generous. 
So next, oh, sissy, since it didn't get in the mail, love, love, love. So this is a card that's supposed to be in the mail, like for Christmas to my sister Joanne. It didn't get mailed. I sent the box with her, what do you call it, with the, with the skirt in it with all the, 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 the fabric. And guess what? The earrings she was supposed to get for Christmas, they're still here, sissy. So I guess by your birthday, Mother's Day, something, you'll, you'll get it, but it's, it's safe. It's right here where I keep forgetting it. So next for Seedmas, I opened the card, but I didn't look at it. Oh, and I'd like to thank each of you who are members starting, well, next next Thursday, I'm going to have a celebration for the 1,500 subscribers that I have to the channel, but the, the, the giveaway, I'm going to have a small giveaway. I want to give away something, Auntie Joanne says so she's laughing, she knows it didn't get in the package. I have so much stuff. And I pack, I, I pack over the month. Hudson, if you see this, your your package is in the mail. Your quilt is insured and on the way. Casings55 says, hello, G Quat and chat. Thank you for coming. So this, this Seedmas card, oh, wow. This is almost like a painting that I made and another one that I'm starting on the beach. I love this. It's from Gina Gina, Gina Whitfield, and it says, Happy Growing, Hugs and Kisses, Gina, and let me see what she said. I have purple Savoy cabbage, purple kale, oh, I love purple vegetables, purple cauliflower, Purple is my middle name. Some kind of bell pepper and something red, something red plants. And it shows the planting instructions. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And something else. Cherry bell radish. Auntie Joanne, my sister, is eating out of her garden that I planted in December when I was in Arizona. I just stick seeds in the in the in the ground anywhere, whoever's house I'm at. My granddaughter said she's going to plant a porch garden for the eldest member of our branch of the family, who is my mom, and the youngest member, who is my great great grandson. So she's going to plant a porch garden for them. I I put a little a couple plants on the porch last year, and. Ryland had so much fun watering them and looking at them. Mike, chaotic, how is your back feeling? My back was kind of tired and sore. I was supposed to have a spinal for my surgery for my knee, and then something got botched up, and I ended up having general anesthesia, which they tell me is why I'm so tired, because basically... <laughs> The doctor was telling me, when you have anesthesia, you're putting your body to sleep. It's like being dead and then coming back alive again. And all of your body has to wake back up and heal all the stuff that happened. So I had a full and complete, a complete knee replacement. But it was my left knee, not my driving, not my driving knee. So now I opened this package because... I had to break in it. And this is from Psalm 146. First, she wrapped it in this beautiful fat quarter of fabric, which of course I'm going to use. I just have one question for her. If she hemmed this for me to use as is, or if she wanted me to cut it up, I love, love, love it. But in here, she sent so many seeds and a card it says auntie ellen you're thought of with much love prayed for with thanks remembered with joy and it said and wished a merry crossed out valentine's day seed miss as wonderful and can be 
and with hopes, love, and prayers for a speedy recovery, her and Bean Juice Galore. Bean Juice Galore is her little son. We're buddies. We met. We met, and I I patronized his little channel. So I really wanted this one, and I'm going to plant them. Look at these, sissy. All these are Detroit red. Detroit dark red beets. Next are Atomic Purple Gumfrina, something by Baker Creek. Oh my gosh. You know, there's a beet competition going on with uh, the New Jersey, the Garden State Gardener. I wanted to get in it. I didn't have any beet seeds. Sissy, look at all these beets. I'm going to share with you, Sissy. And she, my sister has some beets growing in her yard. And then here are some Chioga beets. Oh, I'm going to be the beet queen. Detroit golden beets. As a matter of fact, I got some fresh beets out of the ground this week from a friend's garden. And I just boiled them a little bit and pickled them. I put some vinegar and some spices in. They're going now. Wait, this is not even half the seeds. I don't even know how many. This this is like when I get the big packages from you, Mike. This is borage but from Baker Creek. Dark, dark purple basil. She did a lot of work doing all this, you guys. Johnny Jump Up Viola from, and there are a lot of seeds in each bag, from M.I. Gardener. Some hyssop. I've never grown hyssop. This will be the first time. My garden is all shade. It doesn't grow anything that needs a lot of sun, but it's a community garden, and I'm lucky to have it at no cost, so I'm thankful, and I love it. Oh, purple Vienna kohlrabi. You guys, look at all these seeds. Can you see all these seeds in here? Oh, this is like Christmas. Rouge de Verona radicchio. Radicchio is a type of lettuce. Psalm says, awesome. She rocks. I love her. Here is some Pablo lettuce. I've never grown this. Oh, my garden is going to love this. Buen, buena mulata, purple cayenne pepper. Mulata means a dark, dark in most, most languages. Whoa. Purple karma barley. Look at all the seeds in here, you guys. Psalms is awesome. Red burgundy okra. Now, I have grown this when I was in North Carolina. I had two or three kinds of okra. And then here's some Mizuna. Benny Hosey Mizuna. There's more, you guys. Oh, albino sugar beet. This must be a white beet. And tomatillos. I make a really good one. Auntie Joanne says, oh my, she loves beets. We both love beets. My mom makes beets. Mother, are you watching or are you out on your porch? My mother has a wraparound captain's porch on her house. And anytime it's 60 degrees or warmer, she goes out and she sits on that porch. And Maria Graham says, Sam, that was so nice to send. Mother Maria Graham is saying hi. So what do you guys have in your garden? And what is your gardening zones? What are your gardening zones? Mike's Chaotic Gardening. Mother, you can't see the chat, but Mike's Chaotic Gardening is saying hi. You love pickled beets the most. Sis, Miss Shirley, I wish you were nearby. We're going to get together, though, because if I take 70 West, I can get to, to Cleveland. Uh, my whole family's in Uniontown, Pennsylvania, in that, that area. Fayette County, 
Pennsylvania, my mom's whole side of the family. Sissy, I will send you some of it, some of my seeds. All those empty empty places in your big your big bed in your kitchen garden, you can put Cleveland, Ohio, 6B. I know we have family. We have we have lots of family in Cleveland, Ohio, Miss Shirley. I I haven't been to Cleveland in a really, really, really long time, but we have lots of family th there. I'm trying to Talmadge Hill something. I used to know the address by heart. Those seeds look amazing. I can't wait. And you know what? I'm going to plant them directly in the ground because the seeds that I planted inside, I don't know whether it was because my attitude sucked this year or what, but they did not do well. Last year, I won. Let me. Oh, did I mention that I won WIG Grow Off 2022? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Auntie Ellen did. She won that thing. She won it. She won it. She won it. And I think I got lazy this year. Regional Sky Girl, you're 9A. Sissy, you're in 9B. Arizona 9B. Psalm 146, I've been talking about you. You were in the bushes. You could probably hear me. I know you're working. I just read out all the things you sent me. And my sister and I are so happy so happy and the beets the beets are a whole family plus i'm going to plant a lot of beets and i'm going to be putting in I when i say me i you guys know that i won't be physically doing the work myself but i'm getting two tin beds because one of my raised beds collapsed it rotted out and the bottom fell out complete with all my garlic i planted about 50 60 cloves of garlic in that one there's a little piece about a foot wide and two feet deep that's still up there the rest just flat fell to the ground so i'm still the winner until april 5th yep still the winner of the wig grow off the first reigning champion what other zones are you guys in or all of you growing okay who is doing 15 minutes a day for their arts and crafts or to create things, something? It could be just planning something. Ty Lily says, don't forget to hit the like button, you guys. I see 20 in the chat, so I hope I have 20 thumbs up. 20 thumbs up. I want to show you guys something because I'm going to give you an update on the bag i was working a resilient dad typing in from the bay with much respect sir don't don't leave yet don't leave yet because i want to give you an update about mrs ard's upcoming gift in fact i will talk about it in one second because i didn't say who i was making it for but it's for mrs ard you guys those of you who like to create, put a little budget aside. I want you to save more money than you spend. But this is one of the things I do when there's a sale. I will buy buttons. These are some of the colored buttons. I collect vintage buttons. These are some of the buttons that I put on my bag. So I took a green one out of here to go to Mrs. ARD. I didn't want to announce it until you were here, ARD. And da, 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 da. I hope you like it. This one of a kind, one of a kind bag, custom made, is for Mrs. ARD. All of all of the petals to the flower were hand cut individually just freehand. It's embroidered in the center. Then I put squares around it. I put some black on the inside just for contrast. And here's the green button. It's just attached to here. I was going to do it today, but I was so tired <laughs> from pushing my cart around, the first cart, from driving around, leaning off both sides of the cart at Walmart getting the groceries in, putting them away all by myself like a big girl. So that's the outside ARD. 
it has neutral colored handles and the part the bottom the bottom of the handle you guys is going to have calf leather calf leather trim on the four bottoms one of a kind and then the inside has a watermark batik so she can put her cell phone in it or something for baby for little ARD and so I just have to square it off and put the bottom in but what I want to show you guys is what I put in the bottom of my bags and this one will have two pieces this is what I say hey Brampton Gardener hey Rochelle thanks for coming and welcome this is one of a kind I don't even know where the rest of the the fabric is I use like to create this pocket because it has like some writing on it and it's an original block it's just something that I sat down and did and this is what you call needlepoint plastic some people do needlepoint on it I cut it and I put two pieces in and then on this bag because I had it it was a piece of faux suede so the two pieces of needlepoint fabric are going to have this gray suede so it'll be all neutral neutral fabrics and i will contact you ard luxury at the elk you're welcome i wanted to surprise you sissy will tell you i i don't tell anybody's business but something from my heart i can't wait to give it to people i can never keep it i could never keep a secret secret i'll say do you want me to tell you and they'll say no and then i tell them anyway then i forget i forget to give it to them can't stop walking but love mowing and cruising how are you doing sir i watch you in the bushes most mornings i try to get back and say hello at least leave you some little purple hearts I see you driving that red engine engine truck in the mornings, but my helper comes at 6 a.m. And that's my cue. I, I get up at five every morning. I get phone calls, believe it or not, at five o'clock in the morning because people know if they call me at six, I'm busy. I'm tied up. Hudson, cue. She says she just wanted to like, share, and say hello. Hudson, your quilt will be there on Tuesday. And there's another little surprise in the box, too. Team Buttery Grits. <laughs> Hudson can cook her boom boom off, and she knows it, too. This is so good, you guys. It is like a family reunion. So what are the rest of you working on? Uh, she said, can never, can never keep a secret. It can never keep a secret. So... Do not call you at five o'clock in the morning. Oh, my sister Joanne will be like, you go up bouncing around nine o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock. Sissy, what in the world are you? Sissy, it is too early. It is too early. But then like after I get off the live tonight, before now, before I can pull up the chat, the chat, I'm asleep with the phone in the bed somewhere. Because I watch it on TV, but I chat on the, I chat on my phone, and I take my glasses off. That's when I get a chance to rest. But then I try to chat when without my glasses on. Oh my goodness, the typos! You're getting wound down for bed at 5 a.m. Oh, that's why you're up so early. Oh, that's why you're always up, Mike, Mike, Mike. Oh me, that's when I'm. I'm alive and well. One of my friends is an artist. Her name is Shonda. She lives. You're cutting out jean squares. Little Karen's, I mean, Karen's little garden. Are you cutting them out to make uh, your bag? Because I, do, you know what I found out? Don't cut. She said she's up at 630, but she don't want to chat with anyone until eight o'clock. I get it. I get it. Sometimes you just need peace and Rusa to start your day peacefully and calm. Mike said, hi, retired. Oh, retired gardener. Yes, I'm retired, but you wouldn't know it. I'm busy. 
I do things until I fall out. Then I do more things until I fall out and more things. So, oh, I know what I wanted to show you guys. I took this out last week and I was like, where did I put that other little thing? The template. For those of you who want to finish quilts, like, I won't pull this whole quilt over. Quilting is, people call making a quilt quilting, but that's not actual quilting. Actual quilting, I mean, putting the pieces together, it's called piecing in, in um, quilting language, in quilt language. When you put the three pieces of the sandwich together, the stitches that you use to hold all three parts, that's what's technically called quilting. I have to get this quilt back to my mom, but this one, I'm trying to pull it over without breaking my arm. My arms are so tired when I finish. You cut jeans squares today. You bought, you bought jeans for $2? Oh, that's, or you bought squares for $2. Either what? Oh, Maria Graham cut out jean squares today. Whoa, yes, that's good. You know you can cut the you can cut the squares any size you want, and you can include the seams. So don't do like when I first started years ago. Just cut down, cut the seams out. Save the waistband. You can make things out of the waistband. Save the little things that you put the belt loops. Save those. Save the hems. You use every single part of it. Karen's little garden, the retired gardener just discovered you. Oh, that is so cute. Brampton finished a table runner the other day, but she still needs to put the binding on. Maria says she's saving everything. So I don't know if you guys can see it. The, those of you who were here last week, so this is, sorry, mom, your, quote, your quilt's only partly on the floor, mom. It's still clean. Uh, this is a quilt made out of my grandfather's shirt. When he passed, my mother had one shirt, and I bought some vintage fabrics to go with it. It's quilted with cotton, and it looks like it's very thin, and it is it's cotton and polyester, but it's tightly woven. It's tightly woven, so it uh, it's 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 warm. I'm holding this over, so I don't know if you can see the feathers. They're like loops going sideways. So this is called feathers. So I'm bringing this back. Oh, these quilts don't seem like it, but they're heavy. But and then there's something called you can do it on paper where you make your own pattern, your own pattern. It's called meandering. Some people call it puzzles, pieces, and you just draw your own squiggles and you go up and down. If you're doing it on a domestic machine, a resilient dad saying, hello, Joanne Stevens, you're holding it this way. You put the quilt over your shoulder and then you're just manipulating it down in columns. Then you roll it up some and you do the same thing. Well, I mentioned there's a template, whoops, that you can buy on Amazon. And I believe it's less than $10. And I'd like to thank all of you. Um, those of you who are members, members of the Friends and Family Club, it's $1.99 a month. And I just want you to know that all the proceeds from that fund are used solely, solely for creating content. I don't use that money for anything else. So this is a template that you buy online. And th these are a couple of things that you can buy that make it easier for quilting and for putting stitches on. And uh, this is a magnetic strip that you put on your sewing machine it sticks to the plate at the bottom. And I don't know if you can see how thin it is. And that's how you sew a quarter of an inch seams. You'll find that you need two people to carry fold mom's quilt like a flag. Never touch the ground. I do. I do. These quilts are heavy. 
this one in the back is staying up there because with one gimpy leg in the knee, I didn't want to climb up on the stool and then the chair to take that one down. Um, Maria Graham says, what is, what's called this? This is a, this one is called a magnetic screen guide, Maria. I mean, I didn't mean to say screen, a magnetic seam drive. I just, hold on one second. I did something to my comments. There they are. A magnetic seam guide. And you just put it down next to the foot and you're, you're, you can't go over very far. Now, the other thing I want to show you guys who are afraid to try finishing a quilt. When I finish the full size one, it's exhausting wrestling with them to get them under machine. I don't do the full size quilts anymore. The most I will do is one like this, which is a little smaller than a twin size. This one I think was 59 inches wide and 78 inches. Usually a twin quilt is 90 to 92 in length, but I wanted, you just do wavy lines, you do echo quilting. That's good. Stitching in the ditch is good or even stitching near the ditch until you get good and you can get in the ditch. So this is what I wanted to show you guys for those of you who are intimidated by doing your own pattern. Look at this. So you buy this. Hold on one second. Let me open it. See where to open the plastic. So this is a template you get on. This one comes from Amazon. Bouge Prepper. Hola. Buenas when it's part of this, you meant the template. Oh, this template is just called a quilting template. It's on Amazon. I will send you the link, Maria Graham. And you see where you can, depends on where you want the machine. I usually start mine like this and come in from the side and then go up and go down. But I have mine memorized in my head let me start again because I think you guys couldn't see my finger. So I come in from the side, then I go up, then I come down and around and around. Then you come up, 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 down, around and around. And then up here, you see where my finger stopped? But guess what is here? So then you move this over and then you just start again. Or you move it down and start it again. And you follow it. And not only does it come with a template, it comes with a special little ruler foot. It's like, it's almost like an embroidery foot, except it's wider. Why? Because so that if you use it with a the thick rulers, you can buy different kinds of rulers, different kinds of rulers to use with this kind of a foot. Or you see this one just fits exactly inside this one. So this is a way to finish quilts. If you don't want to, just practice it. You can't do anything wrong. That foot is, is, that foot is cool and fits right in. It's just perfect. It's just perfect. And anybody, anybody can use it. And what you do is like you normally take the presser foot off on the side of the machine. And, you know, there's a screw that holds it. The same thing, the same screw. You take that big screw off down by the needle and then you slide this up and then just tighten the screw. Hello, TRG, the retired gardener. I have to remember that. So... Me, the queen of dropping things, I'm going to put this back in here. And close it up until I can actually demonstrate it. Uh, Joanne Stevens, this one, I hate changing feet too. Oh, but you know what, Brampton? Put a dime, a dime by your sewing machine. Just a thin dime. Don't change your... 
foot that screw anymore with the um, the flat edge screwdriver always slides out it slides up and down i find that using a dime in there fits just right and it's round and your fingers fit on it more easily you should put the link in the comments after the show i will i will do that i will do that you hate changing the feet and the little template, everything comes right in. And, okay, at the end, I'll put the link in for this template as well as the link for the magnetic seam guide, which I already don't know what I did with it over here. I'll find, uh, I'll find it or my helper will find it. Mr. Hershey just lays behind stuff. She said, yeah, that's cool. So is anybody, anybody doing their 15 minutes of a challenge of, of you can be drawing, you can be painting. You've lost so many seam guides. I don't really use a seam guide. Actually, I have a quarter inch foot that's on Bessie. Bessie's my little black sewing machine that I, my antique machine, but right now I'm doing a lot of bags. I'll do it, sewing a lot of jeans and I don't want to scratch the paint, oops, scratch the paint, paint up on my vintage machines. So I bought this Singer heavyweight, heavy duty machine just for sewing bags and jeans. Mr. Hershey said, hi, you've lost so many seam guides. Or you don't have to use a, a seam guide. You can use masking tape. You can use masking tape. I don't have, I, I, there's a little way that you can, you can take just a regular ruler and put it next to the needle and you can see how far out you're actually sewing. Because I'll tell you a secret, a quarter inch sewing foot doesn't mean, I was talking to Maria Graham about it, doesn't mean that you're sewing a quarter inch seam. A quarter inch seam, when you're following a pattern, they actually mean a scant quarter inch, which is, it doesn't matter if you're just working on a scrap quilt or something that you're making up. But when you're following one of the intricate patterns, not something like this that's just like basically squares, which as long as you keep the same seam allowance, it doesn't matter. But if you're following a pattern from some of the fancier, more intricate quilts, this quilt behind me is very simple. It's just fat quarters that I cut all at one time. The What makes it look nice is the fabrics. I just use beautiful fabrics. You all use tape of a particular pattern like if it's five, five eighths or otherwise. Well, I don't, I don't eyeball it. I, my, my seams are specific and you measure it. And what I do is use a masking tape if I'm showing someone else and you can take the masking tape and put it layer on layer and layer, layer it about five or six times, 10 times and use a razor or something to cut it and put it there. And you can make your own your own seam guide. There are lots of ways to do it. Do whatever is comfortable and works well for you. My, my quilts that I exhibit are pretty intricate and they have to be exactly on point. I, I don't have one of them here to show you where the tips, the tips have to meet just right, the everything. And they're being judged. And 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 the other people, the, the quip police in my group, they they know it's like, mm, look at her, her corners are all cut off. Oh, they can be, they can be real, real rough. So what who's eating out of their garden right now? We still have about six minutes before Nikki and the chat go live. She said, you know where the setting is on your foot. You're very surprised. The larger ones are annoying. Oh, I just, I just, I sew different things on different machines. I like, oh, my, my you don't have to hand base so that they're perfect. But if that's your style, for yours to be perfect, it's good. I, my corners are perfect, but I don't, I hand sew. Oh, that's what I'll show you. You see this? 
this is, let me see if I can show it real. You see, this is a mitered, what they call a mitered corner, you guys. You see where it goes to the end? Well, this is what's, I'm not bragging, but this is a perfect mitered corner. But what I do is I hand sew my bindings on my quilts. That's why my, my, my quilts are expensive because I spend a lot of time hand basting it. And I don't know if you can see, these little stitches are a quarter inch apart. You heard back from Afri Quilt Africa Fabrics, the material's almost on its way. Yes. So all these, this quilt is for my mom. So of course I sat there and hand stitched every little thing. And yes, Auntie Nana's perfect little, little um, corners. But like I said, you guys do whatever you find comfortable. When you've been quilting as long as I am and teaching quilting, you find that sometimes people that never quilted before will come up with a way that you never thought of with all your fancy classes and whatnot. Use something for your serger. I, I, I don't use a serger anymore. I use my zigzag stitch. For those of you who don't have sergers, you can just use a zigzag stitch and a running stitch. I didn't have room for 35 sewing machines and a long arm and all my embroidery foot so here. So Marie Graham says another great live. Thank you. So I kept the machines that I really love. I kept, I have one embroidery machine, a one machine that does a lot of decorative stitches. I have two feather weights. I have a big, 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 a big heavy duty machine, an industrial machine that was my grandmother's. You will be seeing that shortly. And that's about it. That's enough. Auntie Joanne has like five or six or seven sewing machines out there that I may or may not have brought some of them to her house. She has a treadle machine out there for me. You say hi, food preservation channel. So, you know, again, it's like cooking. Whatever floats your boat, whatever works for you, you do it. You find that Maria Graham has recently joined a quilting group near where she lives. And there'll be some people there. She may decide, oh, I like doing this. Uh, certain scene with knit fabric, she uses the, only the serger and sewing machine for top stitching. You have the two machines. I, I used to have like five machines out at one time. And while the embroidery machine, I'd be listening for it over there. I'd be over here doing something else, something else, something else. You want a cover stitch, but no room. Uh, people in, you know where, what ice water. But you know what, Rochelle, you can just make it work. Just make it work. So you guys, be sure and come on Thursday. I'm not sure what the date is. But I will be doing a small giveaway and make sure that you are still subscribed because it will be for subscribers because I find that many of the channels that I have, people who are members on my channel, they unsubscribe me. When you get to, when you get to like benchmarks, like 1500, 2000, 25, when you get to those benchmark numbers, I don't know. The powers that be, just weird things happen on, on the social media channels. And I'm not saying that it's intentional or what, but it's just a pain in the behind. Does anybody have any questions before we leave on how to do things? So, ARD, this will be finished on Thursday, and I will be calling you about mailing it and I made it lightweight the handles for Mrs. ARDC. These are really lightweight because I know she will have a little ARD with her sometimes. You use an industrial serger, so no pins for you. You can imagine having to replace the knife if you miss a pin. Yeah. 
So the Food Preservation Channel, thank you for coming. Welcome. If you like our content, please come back. And we have a lot of time. I'm actually, actually, actually an excellent, excellent cook as well. I You bought some thin rope for a basket, but it's bigger than clothesline because you couldn't find. Oh, clothesline, the best clothesline to get because we're going to be making some baskets here is from... Oh, I forgot the store near, I had Yankee sister pick up some for me. You don't want the one to change the one for your brother. Oh my gosh. No, no. So I, I used to have, when I had 35 machines, I had one machine at the, at the shop every, every month, every month, my machine shop guy and I were buddies. You don't want to change it. Okay. You guys, well, as they casings 55, thank you. In American Sign Language, this is an I. This is an L. This is a U. I love you. Thanks for coming. Do what you love. Love what you do. And the Food Preservation Channel. Maybe because I cook. I have some really, really good recipes. I am part of six living generations of cooks, chefs, my 20-year-old great-granddaughter even has a baking business. 